Welcome, everybody. My name is Chris Mezrosh. I am the Sunday service coordinator uh, for uh, today's service. And whether this is uh, your first time on our, in our church service, or the first time in a little while, or you're somebody that you come every week, I'd like every one of you to feel welcome. It's a very special place. And it's a, a place where we, we do things in a special way to bring sacredness to it. There's nothing I'm always reminded every Sunday, there's nothing naturally sacred about this. It's what we bring to it. So for my uh, uh, our opening words today, uh, I would like to do a responsive uh, reading where I'll say a line and then in between every line together, we'll say, we remember the blessing. We remember the blessing. We remember the blessing of just being with people. We remember the blessing. We, were met, we remember the blessing of strengthening abilities. We remember the blessing. We remember the blessing of the exchange. We remember the blessing. We remember the blessing of what we have grown. We remember the blessing. We remember the blessing of what is still growing. And finally, we remember the blessing. Oh, 
At times, our own spark of light goes out and is rekindled by the spark from another person. Each of us has cause to think with deep gratitude of those who have lighted the flames within us. And if you would please, uh, let us know in the chat, if you're lighting a chalice or a candle, tell us uh, where you're lighting it from so that we can gather in spirit in the mystery of the hour. And as people are pulling, uh, putting those in the chat, um, I have an announcement to read. The Bazaar Committee would like everyone to know that they have decided not to do the white elephant sale as a part of the outdoor mini bazaar on September 25th. This will greatly reduce the number of volunteers needed for the event and enhance safety and social distancing. Please hold on to your items for a separate spring event. We hope to identify a room for storing these items over the winter if you are running out of space. More details about the bazaar will be forthcoming this week. The bazaar committee says thank you. And now it is our time for joys and sorrows. It's another way that we, we create community in these virtual spaces. Uh, so now what I'd like you to do is to please put in the chat uh, anything that you would like the wider community to know. And if you would like people to, to think of you, uh, but you would not like to actually put in the chat um, what is going on, uh, you can just play, you can just say stone, please. And uh, I'll announce that and I'll announce who the stone is for. And then we can keep, we can keep you in our, our, our hearts and in our minds. Right. Now is the time of offering. And when I, I think about offering, I think about what it means to people's church. I think about uh, one of our old standby hymns, From You I Receive. So I just would like to, to read this and just really, I want you to be, as you hear these words, think about the, how true this has been for us in the last year, um, for all the things that we rely on for supporting us through this pandemic. From you, I receive. To you, I give. 
together we share. And from this, we live. So uh, I invite you to be as uh, generous as you can be at this time and really give to one of the things that has uh, been um, a very stable thing and, and something that's really sustained a lot of us through this pandemic. Hope come from the place where the hurt comes. I said, hope come from the place where the hurt comes. I said, hope come from the place where the hurt comes. I said, hope come from the place where the hurt comes. I said, hope come from the place where the hurt comes. I said, hope come from the place where the hurt comes. I said, hope come from the place where the hurt comes. I said, hope. Because your spirit needs protection, so hey, gather up your sinew and gather up your affection. Hey, hope is not a feeling, hope is an action. Hey. Emily Dickens' poem, Hope is a Thing with Feathers, goes this way. Hope is a thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings the tune without the words and never stops at all. And the sweetest in the gale is heard and sore must be the storm that could abash the little bird that keeps so many warm. I've heard it in the chilliest land, non the strangest sea, yet never in eternity, it asked a, a crumb of me. And now I'd like to introduce our speaker for today, uh, Donna McClurkin. Donna is the mother, a chicken whisperer, a climate activist, and she has been a member of People's Church for nearly four years. Thirteen Ways of Looking at Hope. In the wake of the recently released report from United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC, 
and unrelenting, unprecedented everything, the hope despair binary seems to be just about everywhere. This is an exploration of spaces between and beyond the binary. It's an experiment in nonlinearity, an homage to poetry, a bow to the more than human world, and an outlet for my love of crafting run on sentences. Thank you for being here for the sharing of this reflection on hope. I wrestled with it. The subject felt too big. But there were things that wanted saying, and I wrote my thoughts as they came, stream of consciousness style. The title came to me at the 11th hour from a poem called 13 Ways of Looking at a Blackbird by Wallace Stevens. Looking at hope 13 ways provided structure. This reflection is also informed by the unearthing of a 2013 poetry class assignment I took at the KIA on double agenda poems. That's a style of writing that nudges two seemingly disparate subjects up against one another. The reader is left to make the connection. This isn't that, it's not a poem, and there are many more than two subjects, some of which may seem on the surface to not be, at all hope, to not be about hope at all. But the idea of it gave me confidence to try this experiment. One, the well-known Emily Dickinson poem, Hope is the Thing with Feathers, suggests that it is the presence of hope that keeps us moving forward in the face of adversity. It's a way of honoring the human capacity for hope as a sustaining force. My choice of this poem is a way of honoring that as well. Two, my own thoughts about hope have been all over the map. Mostly I don't have hope, which is radically countercultural, un-American even. People look at me incredulously and with what might pass for pity when I say that I don't have hope. I know that probably comes from a place of caring and maybe a little discomfort, and also the fact that certain words are intimately connected with hope, namely optimism and positivity. In general, I don't feel particularly optimistic and I have a visceral reaction to the idea of positivity because undergirding it is that any, undergirding it is that any uncomfortable feeling ought to be suppressed by any means necessary. I'm more inclined to what a stranger shared with Glennon Doyle, the author of Untamed, at the end of Doyle's first recovery meeting in a church basement with really bad fluorescent lights and terrible coffee on her sixth day of sobriety. This is what the stranger said to Doyle. Doing life right is just really hard. Feeling all your feelings is hard, but that's what they're there for. Feelings are for feeling, all of them, even the hard ones. Three, there are hierarchies of hope and those hierarchies depend on who is saying a thing, who is on the receiving end and what's at stake. Shop clerk to customer, I hope you have a great day. Mother to daughter, I hope you can forgive me. Young woman in Kabul to the world, I'm just seeking a way to get out of Afghanistan because there is no hope for women and the future. Could it be that in some instances, hope is the providence of the privileged? I think so, that I can make the time to think and write about these things as evidence of my own privilege. Four, I've been thinking a lot about Pandora. You might know her, but I needed a refresher, which sent me down a rabbit hole, which I'll just net out here. Pandora is a woman in Greek mythology, which is the body of myths originally told by ancient Greeks concerning the origin and nature of the world, the lives and activities of deities, heroes, and mythological creatures. Pandora is entrusted with a box which, when opened, releases all the evils into the world. All that is left behind when she hast after she hastily closes the lid is usually translated as hope, though it also could have the pessimistic meaning of deceptive expectation. Five, in a November 2019 New York Times column on climate grief, reporter Kara Buckley asks, 
Have you ever known someone who cited the Anthropocene in a dating profile? She does, and so do I. It could be that Ms. Buckley and I are the only two that do. The profiles that I read are mostly business as usual, men in search of travel companions to exotic locations, candlelight dinners, walks on the beach, and that sort of thing. I swipe on by. Except for the travel, I scratched that itch long ago, these activities sound lovely. But in the context of the rapidly warming planet, they are not compelling for me. Why do I maintain a profile online? It's an experiment, but it's not about hope, it's about probability. The slightly greater than zero, zero odds of a connection with a fellow human willing to go there to do all the hard stuff. Six, a friend was over the other night for a cobbled together dinner. Long after the hummus and dolmas, a generous gin and tonic and catching up in general, she asks, what brings you joy? Holy cow, there's a mile long list. And I begin sharing a sliver of it by saying dinner with you. I love life so much. And I love the spaciousness of both and which allows for the holding of the horrificness of a lot of things and gratitude, beauty, and love of which there is so much in this world. Seven, recently I was driving down H Avenue between third and sixth street, which is quite hilly. I could see ahead of me a few hundred feet that an animal had been hit by a car in the middle of my lane, a bird. There was not much left of the creature, but I knew it was a turkey because of the feathers and because I drive down this road often and see turkeys attempting to cross. It should be noted there are no speed limit signs in the semi-rural area, which seems to be interpreted by many drivers as authorizations to get to their authorization to get to their destination, the sooner the better. I always feel sad when passing the animals whose lives we take. There are so many. What was notable about this particular incident was another turkey standing near the dead bird on what passes for a narrow shoulder. I'm crying as I write this, and I cry still when passing this particular stretch of road. The remnants of the bird now obliterated into just another roadkill, indistinguishable from any other. We think we can't know what animals are thinking. But my, but my bones know the turkey on the shoulder was grieving. I don't see it anymore, though I look every time. And every time I pass that stretch of road, my heart breaks and I let it. Eight, 13 ways of looking at a blackbird stands a four. A man and a woman are one. A man and a woman and a blackbird are one. A friend told me once as I was grieving the loss of a lot of things all at once while she just sat there with me bearing witness. She said, we are meant to hurt this hard. We are losing so much. And she said that a broken heart can contain the whole world. At first, I didn't understand. I understand now. And also this, I am the turkey grieving. I am the roadkill. I am the driver, the feathers, the gravel, and the sand on the road shoulder. I am meant to feel the weight of the world's woundedness. Nine, hopium, noun, an addiction to false hopes, irrational or unwarranted optimism. 10, Derek Jensen is an American eco-philosopher, radical environmentalist, and prolific writer. His 2006 Orion Magazine essay, Beyond Hope, holds these passages. No matter what environmentalists do, our best efforts are insufficient. We're losing badly on every front. Those in power are hell-bent on destroying the planet and most people don't care. Hope, we are told, is our beacon in the dark. It is our light at the end of a long, dark tunnel. 
It is our reason for persevering, our protection against despair, which must be avoided at all costs. How can we continue if we do not have hope? Hope is in fact a curse and a bane, he goes on to say. Hope leads us away from the present, away from the who and where we are right now and towards some imaginary future state. But what precisely is hope? At a talk I gave last spring, someone asked me to define it. I turned the question back on the audience and here's the definition we all came up with. Hope is a longing for a future condition over which you have no agency. It means you are essentially powerless. To hope for some result means you have given up any agency concerning it. But when we realize the degree of agency we actually do have, we no longer have to hope at all. We simply do the work. We make sure salmon survive. We make sure prairie dogs survive. We make sure grizzlies survive. We do whatever it takes. When we stop hoping for external assistance, when we stop hoping that the awful situation we're in will somehow resolve itself, when we stop hoping the situation will somehow not get worse, then we are finally free, truly free, to honestly start working to resolve it. I would say that when hope dies, action begins. 11, ultimate, originally called ultimate Frisbee is a non-contact team sport, seven players per team played on a rectangular field with end zones. Among the game's 10 simple rules, I want to call out two. First, the game is self-officiating. Players are responsible for their own foul and line calls. Players resolve their own disputes. Secondly, spirit of the game. The foundation of the rules in Ultimate is spirit of the game, which places the responsibility for fair play on the player. Competitive play is encouraged, but never at the expense of respect between players, adherence to the rules, and the basic joy of play. My daughter plays this game and I've fallen in love with it. Of course, I wa love watching her. It's pure awe noticing what a body can do and what the mind can do too, making split second decisions. In this game, no one is exploited. There are no advertisements. No one is trying to sell me things. This game is a metaphor for possibility. This is what democracy looks like, and it's joyful. 12, Kate Marvel, clim climate scientist with NASA. We need courage, not hope. Gregory Orr, poet. Hope is a verb with its shirt sleeves rolled up. Krista Tippett, host of On Being. Hope is a muscle, a practice, a choice that actually propels new realities into being. And it's a muscle we can strengthen. It is not the same as idealism or optimism. This kind of hope has nothing to do with wishful thinking. Hope as I've seen it lived is at once fierce, and persistently joyful. I've come to understand this quality of hope as an essential foundation and power for the generative story, the generative landscape that is emerging out of all the rupture this moment in the life of the world has laid bare. 13, possibility, noun a thing that may be chosen or done out of several possible alternatives. So we can keep doing what we've always done or we can choose to do other things. Natural Resources by Adrian Rich stands a 14 partial. My heart is moved by all I cannot save. So much has been destroyed. I have to cast my lot with those who, age after age perversely, with no extraordinary power, 
reconstitute the world. There are so many people in this world choosing to do other things. And right here in Kalamazoo, people taking actions in which the values of justice, cooperation, nonviolence, and honoring the more than human world are upheld. You will likely not hear about them, but they are here reconstituting the world, experimenting with making the impossible possible. Well, thank you very much, Donna. That was very, uh, that was just very touching, very moving. Thank you also, Donna, for um, uh, putting, uh, introducing us to uh, uh, the music that was the operatory music. I realized I was so touched, moved, and inspired by that music. I did not do the uh, thanks for all the sustains, so I apologize for that. So now, um, if you follow, if you've done these uh, summer services, you know we're about to go into breakout rooms, and uh, so we're going to be uh, you'll be in a small room with about four to six other people. And um, so what'll come up, uh, up on the screen, there'll come a, a prompt that will say, uh, you're gonna be joining breakout room two, let's say. You just click on, yep, I'm gonna join that room. And then you'll go into the, a virtual space with the group of people. And here are the questions we would like you to discuss. One, is a hope a tool that you rely on to weather life's adversities. Two, why might hope have been all that remained in Pandora's box after all evils escaped into the world? Three, what experiments might you be willing to consider after hearing this reflection? Uh, and uh, just a reminder about the guidelines for discussion. We ask you to speak the truth as you understand it. Uh, we would like you to uh, let make sure everybody gets a chance to comment first. Uh, we would ask you not to comment on other people's uh, comments until everybody has had a chance to share and uh, do anything that you can do to help the flow of discussion continue and to not inhibit it. And at this time, we'll have about 15 minutes to be in a small group breakout rooms and then please stay, then we're gonna come back. Um, we'll have a final song and I'll have some closing words. So much wonderful fellowship, so much wonderful singing. I want to thank again Donna McClurkin for the wonderful job she did preparing herself and the, the, the beautiful words that she spoke. I want to uh, thank Laura, uh, our uh, AV person from the bottom of my heart. I want to thank all of you for coming and for sharing. Um, if you would like to, uh, um, oh, first let me say our closing words. Help us always be hopeful gardeners of the spirit who know that without darkness nothing comes to birth as without light nothing flowers may sarton and now i would like to invite you 
to continue the wonderful fellowship and the wonderful discussions that we were having um, in our breakout rooms uh, for the coffee 15 minutes that will come immediately after the service. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to be of service. And I hope everybody has a wonderful and blessed day.